Good morning and welcome to So Timeless. Join me for a cuppa. And today we're going to finally continue with the white spotted uh, 1950s blouse that I started a while ago. Uh, it's been a rather busy time with my daughter's 13th birthday, which um, was rather epic in her words. And she enjoyed thoroughly. And my mother-in-law's been unwell, so it's been a rather busy time um, all round. But I'm here now, and I thought I would just whiz you through the finishing of these um, the blouse. So it's a very simple blouse. Um, if you remember, we discussed it in the previous video. It's a raglan sleeve, so one that, not the sort of sleeve that joins in on an armhole, but one that comes down front and back. And when you join the sleeves into the front and back parts, it then forms the neckline. It has a very nice finish to it once it's all done. What I've done in preparation for this video is um, I've just pinned the sleeve very roughly into place on the front and back, back parts so that I can just put those together. Once those are in place, uh, it's just the sleeves are in. So it's just a matter of doing the, the collar and the facings, finishing off the sleeve cuffs, and then it'll be hemming and the buttons. So not a lot involved in making this blouse um, really at the end of the day. Um, although there's a fair amount, to be fair. It just seems like not a lot when you're just running through it very quickly. But let's get on. I will um, not bore you with lots of talking today because I'm rather tired still. So I will just show you and stop every now and then if there's anything I want to tell you. Um, and we'll see how we get on and how quickly we can reach a finished product. The seams are done and finished off and while I was finishing the seams off I finished off the the edges of the front as well for when I do the facings. So the next step is going to be to get the collar in. So I'm going to start off by just pinning it in place so I know where it's going and we find the centre of the collar. Just by folding it in half, make sure the bits are matching up, and find the centre of the, the back, again just by folding it, and then match the two centres together, pinning them in place. And then it's literally just going to be to follow the, the collar around the edge of the neckline. Making sure that all seams are facing the right way in the same way on both sides. So everything lies nice and flat when you iron it. And take it along as far as it will go. To fit in and that means when we go when we do the facing next once we turn it around the collar will be in place where it should be and this collar doesn't go all the way 
to meet. It, it almost meets. There's not one that meets completely. So I don't need to pin the other side because I'm going to be sewing it as I go. And I'm just checking though they are reaching the same sort of area on both sides so I know I've got it centered. So I'm going to go ahead and sew that. So the collar is sewn in place and I've given everything an iron so that the seams are all lying nice and flat. I uh, ironed the uh, dots down as well to make sure they're ready for when the seams are put together. And I've then pinned the that's dots, the dots like that. So that's lying nice and flat and ready to be sewn down into place. And I've pinned the the collar the correct way down with the facing in place so that on both sides so that they're just ready to to sew into place at the top now and still deciding there's two ways of doing the bottom you could sew this in place and then take the hem from there or you could just do the facing and the, as part of the hem which is the more common way of doing it i'll have a think about that but I'm going to get the facing stitch down and then we'll be onto the cuffs for the sleeve. Just doing a quick check on Dolly to make sure that the collar is properly in place and it looks like everything is going to lie as it should before I continue. So the collar is in place, the facings are attached properly. These have come out beautifully with the corners nice and crisp and neat. This will lie better once the rest of the blouse is all together. Difficult when it's not all sewn together to get it to lie properly, but I just wanted an idea. So next step will be to get the cuffs onto the ends of the sleeves. So I'll work on that next. Nice gathered cuffs. And like I said before, I'm not going to do cuffs with buttons, but rather to do the the cuffs as um, just all in one that you can pull up or down as you please slightly looser if you pull them down and pull them up if you want them to stay further up the arm see how that works and goes I hope it does work as I'm picturing and imagining and then we're nearly done
on and done. So the next step is to sew up the side seams, the sleeve seams, that'll be all in one, from the cuff to the underarm, and then from the underarm down to the hemline, gets done all in one. Once those seams are done, then it's a matter of doing the hem in the bottom and then we'll be ready to put the buttons on. Give it another iron and give it a good fit on Dolly to make sure that everything is as it should be. I did decide to leave the dots that normally go in the back and the front towards the bottom, which shape it more. I think I mentioned that in the first video because I wanted this to be more free-fitting. It's a lovely, soft, drapey sort of fabric and I wanted it to be able to be worn in or out of a skirt or trousers or jeans as the person wishes. Um, when you put the darts in, it makes it does pull the waist in a lot and unless you have an extremely slim waist, it can make it very difficult to fit the blouse nicely so i wanted to make it more accessible to more people um, and easier to wear something that that i would like to wear I, I don't really like the ones that pull in a lot around the waist because you have a day with bloating or a day where you've eaten too much or whatever and then you don't want it all very tight around there and you want the option to wear it in or out or however you want so this gives you those options so i'm going to go ahead and do the side seams i'll go straight on to doing the hem and i'll be back to um, cheese some buttons with you fit on dolly again, blouse is all ironed, hem is in, cuffs are on, that's the hem all done and I've measured out where the lapels will lie. It's all pretty soft on this pattern, it's not really ironed down as such so I've just pinned it into place because I need to see where to put the buttons on. And I have two sets of buttons. I think I know which one I want to use, but um, I'll show you both and decide. So these are the two sets of buttons. This one is a black button with grey centre and white just inside of the rim. 
and these ones are white with a black rim and I'm thinking these are the ones that I feel match the best and are going to look the nicest on this blouse. So now I need to measure out where the buttons go and make the buttonholes and then I'll be back to sew the buttons on. Because these buttons are quite small, I've put them at five centimeter, centimeter intervals, so quite close together. As I thought it looked nicer that way, give it a nice finish, finishing touch. And I really like the look of these buttons, it's almost like they're made with this fabric. So I'll get the buttonholes made there and then we can sew the buttons on together. We've reached the finishing stages, finishing off bits of this blouse now, attaching the buttons, ready to go. So I've got the first two on. It's um, important to measure, make sure you've got the uh, buttons going on straight. And I like to start from the bottom to make sure that the bottom edge has met up perfectly because you start from the top and you get the first button out of line and then that's your whole thing. You have to take every button off and start again. So not the cleverest idea. And I actually use the, the button hole to measure where I'm going to be putting the button on the other side so that I have them in the correct place which is a useful way of doing it. Interesting fact or maybe a fun fact do you know why women's buttons go on the right side uh, sorry the left side and men's go on the right side and I'm sure you've thought of lots of reasons why and I can hear lots of reasons being said why some interesting ones ones I've thought of in the past as well but the real reason was actually just to do with manufacturing Manufa in the in the early days it didn't matter which side the buttons were on really and um, a lot of times buttons weren't down the front of the garment anyway they were either down the back or maybe on the side or along the shoulder seams or just at the neck so it didn't really matter but when buttons started going on the front for both men and women's garments for manufacturing purposes to make things easy and so that shop assistants would recognize whether a garment was for a man or a woman if it wasn't completely obvious straight away when women's tops started looking more like shirts at times and men's tops changed as well so they they decided to put women's on the left men's on the right just to distinguish between the two and that was purely the only reason there's no other reason at all so nothing to do with the left side of the brain the right side of the brain which i'm sure some of you were thinking along the lines of when trying to figure it out so fun fact Maybe some of them might come up in a quiz at some point, uh, if you're into that sort of thing. Never know. Never seen them come up in any sort of quiz I've played or done, but you never know. And um, I find all facts about sewing interesting. Maybe you do, maybe you don't. Certainly about clothes, um, I certainly do. So this blouse is almost ready, almost done. Once it's finished, I'll do some photos, ready for it to go onto my Etsy store for selling and as advertisement for made to order blouse if anybody wanted the same sort of style in a different colour or maybe with some adaptations. But for now that's just me finishing off walking you through the making of a 1950s blouse where I've made some adaptations some changes to make things the way I'd like them, the way I was sort of envisioning them to ensure that it was a garment that is something that can be used 
in today's lifestyle, in today's wardrobes, still giving that bit of a vintage flair to an outfit. I hope you'll join me soon again for another garment. Um, not sure what I'm going to be making next. I've got a few things in the pipeline ready to go. But this is the 1950s blouse. Pretty much all done. Just going to finish off these finishing touches. And I'll see you again soon. Please do subscribe below and please do like the video if there was anything of interest for you in it or you liked it. Uh, obviously this I'm quite new to all of this which you might uh, get from from the way my videos are going and I'm a bit all over the place with some of them but I'm getting there and I do hope that you'll continue on this journey with me. Um, I've also got some exciting new things coming up soon with a different type of garment that I'm going to be making in the future. But that's for another time. See you another time. Bye bye.